In the last video, I demonstrated how the dbscan algorithm works. Now I'll show you how to implement it in Python. I'll start by importing my dependencies. Pandas for working with the data, sklearn to retrieve the data and call both the dbscan and knearest neighbors algorithm, and finally matplotlib for plotting. In this cell, I'm loading the iris dataset. As mentioned in previous videos, the iris dataset is typically used for classification. However, I'm discarding the class label for the sake of this tutorial and will treat the dataset as if it were a clustering problem. Here you can see a printout of the first five rows of the dataset. Like k-means, I need to scale my data. Because dbscan works through the use of a distance metric, scaling the data is very important to ensure all features are treated as equally important. In this case, I am choosing to scale the data in terms of standard deviations from the mean. This is a printout of the first five rows of the scaled data. We can easily run the algorithm by calling the dbscan class which we previously imported. You will see that dbscan asks for two parameters, eps meaning epsilon, the distance parameter, and min samples, meaning the minimum number of points needed to form a cluster. As a rule of thumb, I like to use the number of features times two as the value for min samples. However, as with anything in machine learning, you can experiment with different values and see what works best. With that said, the value must be an integer greater than or equal to one. Finally, I'll tell the dbscan model to fit itself on the data frame and predict which cluster each row belongs to. I have printed out the set of clusters that were made. You can see there are four clusters, 0, 1, 2, and negative 1. Negative 1 is not actually a cluster. Negative 1 means the data point did not make it into a cluster and is remaining unclustered. But this is just a quick, unsophisticated run of the algorithm. We really should take a more rigorous approach to determining an appropriate value of epsilon. Just like k-means, we can once again use the elbow method for tuning the algorithm. However, with k-means, we sought to find the correct number of clusters to use. dbscan is searching to find the best value of epsilon to use. Thus, the implementation of the elbow method will be different. In dbscan, we want to look at the distance to the nearest neighbors in order to get an idea of what an appropriate epsilon value would be. To quickly explain k-nearest neighbors, if I am considering point A and want to see what the five closest data points are to point A, I will run k-nearest neighbors with k set to 5. If I want to find the three closest data points to point A, I'll run k nearest neighbors with k set to 3. It is a very simple algorithm which is often used for classification problems. However, I'm not going to use it for classification, but rather to easily look up any data point and return the k closest points and their distances from the specified point. To determine k, how many neighbors we intend to look at, we can use a simple heuristic. That is, use the same number that was used for min samples and less min samples is less than 2, in which case we set k at 2. This allows us to see what the minimum epsilon value would need to be for each data point to be able to start their own cluster. The reason I'm using 2 as a minimum threshold is because I will use sklearn's k-nearest neighbors implementation to find the distances, and the closest neighbor for each data point is the point itself, meaning that distance will always be 0. At a minimum, I want to look at the second closest point as it's the closest point that is not the point itself. Once we find those distances, we can sort them in descending order and plot them to find an elbow. You can see the shape of the distances returned is 150 comma 8. This is because there are 150 rows in our data set, and for each row, I ask k nearest neighbors to return the distance of the eight closest points. The first element in each row of the distance matrix will equal zero because it will be the distance from itself. The eighth element in each row will be the farthest of the eight closest points. That is the point we are interested in. In this cell, I am taking the eighth nearest data point of each row in the distance matrix and writing it to the original data set. Now that we have the distances for the eighth closest point in each row, we want to plot what that looks like. As mentioned, we need these distances sorted in descending order. I'll then reset the index so we have them ordered from 0 to 149 and call pandas plot method to produce a visualization. With this visualization, we can estimate the elbow. 
As you'll find in this example, there isn't a clearly defined elbow. There is a curve which is informative, but not everyone would agree on where that elbow point should be set. Some people would say the elbow exists here. Others may be closer around here, and some even down here. That is why the elbow method is not entirely scientific. Nonetheless, it is still informative. If nothing else, it gives us a ballpark for a reasonable range of values of epsilon. From there, we can run the algorithm multiple times with different values of epsilon and manually look through the clusters to see which fit we deem best. I have decided that the elbow should exist around here at about 0 0.7. So in this final cell, I'm going to rerun dbscan with an epsilon of 0 0.7 and keep the min samples as it was before. And that will be the final implementation of dbscan. Hopefully now you understand not just how dbscan works, but how you can go about tuning its parameters as well.